Hey guys, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm Captain Chris here with Dandy Udati. How you doing tonight, Dan? Doing great, man. You know, just another winter day. Just thinking about fishing. Can't wait to get out there. And January's almost over, which is awesome. Yeah, we just had our first like major snowstorm of the season, so hopefully that's the last one, and we yeah. can just kind of cruise right into the summertime. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I remember winter's past though. Major snowstorm was like three inches of snow. You know, I mean, we didn't have school really yesterday, much. so yeah. <laughs> that's what I go by. I, just I know, they're canceling the school if the wind blows the wrong way. I don't know what's up with that, but it's just no one wants to be there, I think. <laughs> no comment. No comment at all. Well, speaking of school, we actually have somebody who's taken on uh, a huge, huge undertaking this year, uh, Mr. Michael Murray. Mike, thanks for coming out tonight. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dan and Chris, for having me on your show this week, so... Um, I'm really excited to uh, help kind of promote this this new program. You know, we're still in the early stages, um, but you know, I'm feeling really confident right now with the high school program that I'll be getting um, a lot of students signed up and awesome um, interested. In awesome, technology. Mike. Before we get into what the actual program is and all of that, what's can you give us a little bit of your background? Yeah, so um, I grew up in Newburyport. My father runs a charter boat company, so I would spend my summers on the boat. Um, as first mate for him, you know, so I, I kind of was born into it, you know, I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity. Would you say yeah, that your family is obsessed with fishing? <laughs> <laughs> Very obsessed. Um, all winter long, that's all we're still thinking about. We're looking at boats. We're thinking about going down to Florida, thinking about going to Jersey, wherever there's a deal to be bought. We're always looking to go down and grab it. So let the people know because your father was a guest on the show. He's a great friend of mine. He was a huge influence in my life as far as getting into being a charter captain. So your father's Peter Murray, who's been on the show. He runs Obsessed Charters down in Plum Island. And they are a fishy family where your brother's also a charter captain, works with your father as well. They have two boats. Well, three boats? Or are they down to two? Uh, we're down to two right now. Yeah. Um, we're looking to kind of downsize, sell one of them. So Yeah. And then Christine used to also be a mate for your father before she moved out. We miss her, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the whole family, it's a family-run business. Um, we're all involved. Um, I got into the mechanical side of it, keeping the fleet going strong. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to this summer coming up because as a teacher now, I finally have some time to get out on the water myself. That's right. You're going to have the whole summer off this year oh, as yeah. opposed to working 60, 70 hours a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike, how old were you when you started like tinkering with motors? Um, when I was in high school, I really started my interest in uh, working on anything from like a little moped engine. I did my first moped engine swap when I was um, in high school. And then just growing up, you know, on the water, we always had um, engine issues midsummer. We'd always be scrambling, changing cables out you know, swapping out motors, whatever we could do um, to keep the family business going. Yeah, when when people charter as much as your dad and your brother do, eventually there's going to be some kind of issue. As a matter of fact, you saved my ass once last year on uh, a Friday afternoon, and uh, you came down after work, and, God, I couldn't thank you enough. You saved my weekend for my charters because – I was working on that boat for 10 hours, and it took you all 10 minutes. So that's why you got to hire the professional people. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's not the first time Amari saved you, though. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's reciprocal out there, yeah. you know? No, honestly, the best story is, and I will put it out there, is when you ran out of gas with your new boat flying around. <laughs> all right, if you want to tell the story, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, life was good. You know, you just got the pair. But the uh, the the it was digital gauge. It has a digital gauge for the um, gas tank, and he didn't. It looked like it was half full, but it was really empty. It was like, like only my yeah. third time <laughs> taking the boat out, so and it, it needed to be calibrated. Out. Yeah, <laughs> and he just probably burned through about thirty gallons of gas that day. And then uh, it was Memorial Day. We were feeling it. <laughs> it was Memorial Day. <laughs> we were feeling America. All right, so I gotta give it. I'll give you the. I'll give you the full image of what was going on. <laughs> So we were driving up and down the beach, and I had the American flag in my hand. So <laughs> Not a small one. I was riding one. up in the bow, waving the American flag as we were going past Salisbury Beach, listening to CCR. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the sound system on the boat at the time. <clears throat> Not so much anymore, but it was sounded amazing. So it was all the way turned up to 11. It was just like, no, 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 no. It was just like <laughs> the flag, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Oh, just stops. Music cuts out. Yeah, fun over. <laughs> oh, this is funny. But oh, it was man. yeah, it was actually your brother that saved the day. We yeah, we went back. 
awesome part about what you guys are doing is you're right at Plum Island. So I was able to – I actually borrowed his truck and went and got gas, and then they gave me a ride back. I think uh, Pete actually gave me the ride back onto the boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, so that was really nice of them to do that for sure. <laughs> yeah, things happen, you know. <laughs> having a little too much fun sounds like. Have you had, what's like you you must have had on the water engine failures, right? Um, I, you know, working on the engines themselves. If I'm going out for a water test, I better be damn sure that thing's gonna be running yeah. top notch. Absolutely. Like, like other technicians, I've seen them bring paddles with them, and they'd be like, "Mike, like you're crazy. You're not bringing a paddle with you." I'm like. You kidding me? Like, if I'm going out on this water test, I got to be confident. Like, my work's done right, you yeah. know. So, I, that's the last thing I want to do is paddling back to the dock. <laughs> like, you never know what you're going to be out there water testing. And, um, you know, I've had some engines running pretty funky out there because I'm trying to diagnose them. You know, bad fuel pumps and the things just surging and it's trying to die on me. But, you know, that's when it clicks in your head and you're like, oh. I know what I, I got to do, get back to the dock as soon as you can. And, and um, you know, I think I've, I think I've made it without, without any toes. So, yeah, knock yeah, on wood on that I'll one. I'll do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been a mechanic for? It's quite some time now. Um, so full time in the field, working for, you know, various dealerships. I think I uh, was on to my sixth year, or seventh mm -hmm. year. Um, so I've worked for, for Hudson's Outboards. I worked down in Essex, Mass for Crocker's Boat Yard, and then I also worked up in Hampstead, New Hampshire for Rock and Am Boat. Oh, Rock and Am Boat, yeah. Yep. It's like the pontoon camp mecca of New England. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't not believe the, the amount of volume that went through that place, you yeah. know. When um, I, when I, I know, for, if it's Hampstead, New Hampshire, too, it's not like it's like, I yeah. go, it's I like one of a sake. It's, yeah. <laughs> I had to replace a lower unit on my Parker, on my Yamaha, and they were the only one that had one in stock. And when I went up there, because I'd never been up there before, Oh my God, man! The like you said, the amount of volume, the amount of boats, and the amount of parts they had—it was really, really, just impressive. But I didn't even knew it existed. So, oh yeah, well I moved up to Kingston, New Hampshire, um, about five years ago, and I must have driven by that place a few times. But when I saw them at the Boston Boat Show, um, I was blown away because their their display. So I started chatting with the boss, and next thing you know, I have him calling me, telling me to come up check out the spot and you know it was right down the street from my house i i couldn't say no i had to go check it out you know they're they're probably one of the highest volume yamaha dealerships um at least in new england you know if not the country so and you're certified you're certified how's it work like do you have to go through school and get certified on a certain brand or you can pretty much work on any engine like um you know it, a lot of it comes down to your experience um you know working um day by day and you know, figuring things out, it's all try and, trial and error, but to be honest with you, like, when you go to the, the certification schools, mm -hmm. that's what really builds up your confidence. You know, if you're going to be going down to someone's boat at the dock and you're bringing your tools with you, you got to be confident you're going to get it done. You got to make that person's day, you know, and um, when I got out of college, um, the best thing I ever done was go to a trade school, so I went up to the Lakes region, and they have a Mercury program there. I got certified with Mercury. And then I was already working at Hudson's at the time. They got me out into the shop more. And then I started doing my uh, factory training with Yamaha and Honda. Um, I started really going more towards the Hondas because that's what my father had at the time. Your father which, loved the Hondas. <laughs> oh, loved yeah. Hondas. <laughs> Loves those Hondas. So it just made sense. And, um, you know, Crocker's Boatyard, they're a Honda dealer. So I finished up all my, my certification, um, all my classes with Honda. So what's that class like when you get certified for a particular brand? Is it uh, how many hours, so to speak? Um, so each class, it's a week long, okay. and um, the dealership will pay for it, which okay. is another awesome perk, you know, about working full-time yep. for a dealer. Um, you know, they're technically required to send technicians out to, um, to train on their products so they can keep their dealer status, and um, they'll pay for your rental car, rental car They'll pay for your hotel, your food, um, your flight down, you know, depending on where the classes might be. And um, did you get to travel anywhere? Oh yeah, I've been to uh, to Georgia twice. Oh nice. Yeah, that's for Yamaha. Yeah, that's where Yamaha is located. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, so you know, when you're there, um, it's all like awesome new products, the things that are just coming out, but they have like the best tools, 
very clean facilities, you know, awesome instructors. You know, every time, like, you could be, you could think you're the best technician in the world, but when you actually go down to the factories and train with what's out there, you know, now, the new stuff, you're always going to come out with something new that you learned. So, there's a lot of new engines. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger oh these God. days. I just looked at a photo of a Scout and I had six 400 Mercs on it. And Shoot. I did the math in my head, and that's 180 gallons per hour burnt, you know, at wide open throttle. I couldn't even imagine, you know. Oh, <laughs> I'm pretty God. sure when he's going somewhere, he's just turning the world till he gets to his destination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I think I actually saw that that boat or something similar to it when I went to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show a couple of years ago. I did see one that had like five or six big 350, 400 engines on them. But, oof. I wonder I, what the math is on like the current market value of gasoline and how much that would actually cost to run. Oh, God. It would be insane. I don't oh, even man. want to think about it. <laughs> 180 stomach. gallons an hour at six bucks But how gallon? fast do you think that boat can go? It could probably go over 100 miles an hour, right? Oh, yeah, it's got to. I mean, you know, the bigger the boat, though, the yeah, more it's weight, weight it's pushing exactly. to. Um, but, you know, comfortable speed. They're probably cruising around, like, 80, you know, yeah. get get places. And oh, I, again, another perk about being a marine technician is I'm going to fix that boat. They're paying me to fix it, you gotta, and you they're paying me to drive, drive it around, <laughs> and I'm wasting their gas. So yeah. that's that's one of my favorite parts about you know working on the water. So what's the sweetest boat you've ever had the opportunity to drive? Um, you know, it, it's gonna be a battle between the old Coast Guard safe boats. Those things were a blast. Oh, that's awesome. Or, what the orange ones? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like they go they go zero to sixty in the matter of seconds. You know, I was putting a lot of Honda two fifties on the back, so. You know, they're rated for 500 horsepower. Originally, they had um, Honda 225s. And by the time all the cities were buying them, you know, those motors were smoked. So um, every time I did a repower, I had to water test it. And I put that thing up on the side so many times where, like, <laughs> water was about to come into the, <laughs> inside <laughs> the cabin. Like, like incredible boat. Um, that or I really enjoyed driving... Um, this landing craft. It was like a, I want to say close to 40 feet. Same thing. I had like twin Honda 250s on it. It wasn't the fastest boat, but man, that thing was an absolute tank. It looked like a boat that, you know, when they would storm D Day on. Yeah. Oh, like front. one of those where they drive up and, oh, yeah. No yeah, kidding. that thing was incredible. To where drive did you around. do that? What did they have one of those? Um, that was down at Crocker's boatyard. So the landing craft was um, part of a, like a tour boat um, that they would go to islands and, just literally beach the thing and drop the front and let people explore the island. And that boat was constantly wiping out lower units left and right because they hired captains that oh, did yeah. not know how to run them. Out. Yeah. But um, that was a cool boat too. That's sweet. So you, you're basically, you basically been like uh like almost like a dealership at your house, right? With the family. Like how many boats do you guys turn? <laughs> like has the oh, state man. said something to you? Like you need a yeah. dealership <laughs> license. <laughs> um, Oh man, students ask this every single time. They're like, "How many boats do you have?" And I'm always like, "Oh, you're gonna make me count again." Uh, it's it is sickening, kind of. You know, <laughs> there's never too too many. I guess we have them scattered around everywhere. My brother's yeah. house, my house, my parents' house. <laughs> oh my god, they're at your house and your brother's house now. <laughs> oh yeah, I really got... wasn't having any of it anymore. Huh? Uh, she she <laughs> liked um. So we we like to try and clean up one boat a year and you know sell it and um. I did it with a Mako I got from a customer of mine. You know, I made a pretty good profit on it. And then my dad found a 20-foot Mako, cleaned it up, painted it. You know, we repowered it, um, found a decent trailer, and he made some good money. So all of a sudden, my mom was like, yeah, she gave him the green light. And that was, like, the worst thing she could have done because then he was going out and buying, like, <laughs> all of these different center consoles that need various degrees of work and, you know, there's just not enough time to get it all done. One day we'll have the, the shop, you know, of my dreams, and we'll get them all sold. Well, your father is the king of Craigslist. Oh, my oh, God. He yeah. finds everything. If he, like, he's like, yeah, I saw this sweet little 17-foot Mako, and it'll be, like, the only clean one, like, you, you've seen ever. And it'll be, like, right down the street, and he'll negotiate and get a good deal on it. Like, the guy's incredible. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
So what are you currently are you currently working on one now? Yeah, so um, the current build that we have going on is uh, 1969 Mako Angler. You know, this is one of my dad's dream boats. And um, I had a customer, we called him Pontoon Paul, and he would come to the, the boat yard with a wad of cash, and he bought everything that was basically going to the dump. Like, it was, like, used tunes, scrapped up railings, interior that I warrantied, but he would scrap things together and sell them, and I don't know how this guy had money, but because it didn't seem like it was a good deal for him, but <laughs> one day he calls me up, and he's like, hey, Mike, you know, I got this this center console I think you might like, because he, he was really a pontoon guy. He didn't really care much about the fiberglass boats. And he was like, yeah, it's about, you know, 17 or 18 feet. It's one of those Makos, I think. And I said, <laughs> a Mako? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, by any chance does it have the rear hatches that, you know, you might sit on, like, behind the console? And he goes, oh, yeah, it's got those. And I told him right away, I'm like, I'm going to be there in, like, about an hour. I got cash in hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I just bought it for the motor. So we ended up with that boat. You know, I needed needed a good cleaning, and um, you know, there's some some rough spots on the sides. It's an older boat, but man, the the amount of work my dad's done, he's great with uh doing the rehabs, and the thing looks like it's brand new now. He does most of the fiberglass work, right? He's been really doing that the last few years. Oh yeah, yep. He'll he's good with um fiberglass and you know painting the holes, um, you know. If, if I got a vision, he'll he'll make it happen. I'm good with the uh, the rigging, you know, the motors, stuff like that. So it's a team effort. What is Paul doing all of this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he drives the boats. And yeah, he, 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 does, <laughs> he, does, he does the test. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's great, man. That's always been one of my dreams is, is to kind of rehab a boat. Hopefully, one day when I get you know like your dad's situation retired, I would love to do that. Oh yeah. Again, like a little twenty foot Mako or something like that. Would be ideal, perfect. Twenty foot Mako, or even like you know, if you find like a like a soaked whaler and you, I don't know, ripping it apart and doing it all over, like I think it's awesome when those are restored. <coughs> and you, the, right now, like at the thirteen whaler, the profit margin <laughs> would be ridiculous because oh it's my crazy God. what they're selling for. Through the roof. Yeah, seriously. I think the boats kind of suck personally. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm driven yeah. those, and I'm like, that's probably honestly, hate to say it, but that's like my least favorite boat, just yeah. because I've worked on so many of them and I've. You know, they have these weird transoms, mm -hmm. so you're trying to install a new motor on them. You got to do some funky things. You got to either, like, modify the bracket of a brand new motor that yeah. costs ten grand, or you got to, like, you know, figure out a way to re-glass the transom because they were built for, you know, a smaller motor yeah, like, back in the day, like a two-stroke. That like Yeah, a it's also weird how, like, the boat stroke. in general, like, it's just enclosed fiberglass with the foam, and then, like, as soon as it, the water starts to breach it, it doesn't drain. It just—it's like a sponge. It just sucks everything up. Oh, and those little whalers. Yeah. There's so there's no, no way to, you have to put a pump in. Somehow. Yeah. There's no like real like drain. Like it's just a, there's <laughs> foam in between fiberglass, and it just gets rotted and shitty. And Ugh. next thing you know, I saw someone had like one of those nine foot tenders, the the whalers, and uh, this guy he was big guy. Um, he might even be li listening to this. Who knows? But God bless you, buddy. He was driving around in one that was so water. I don't know if it was his weight or if it was waterlogged, but he had like an inch of woodway. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just like, dude, this guy's just going to go under. And he's like, it's unsinkable. It's yeah, unsinkable. yeah. The unsinkable whale. Oh, yeah. Every summer you see you see those those groups out there on the river, yeah. and they're in those whalers, and there's literally like an inch of like between like the water line and – them like literally filling up with water like yeah. it's like just the rub rail and i'm like what is going on here yeah. like, it's probably the 13 people they throw in the yeah. <laughs> uh, i did drive a 15 super sport though last summer yeah I that's a, a whole different animal when you yeah. get start going a little bigger that was actually a sweet ride and those those um what is it the outrage the one that looks like a banana but like the the really ugly looking whaler is actually honestly one of the best riding boats i've ever driven Really? Like, unbelievable. But it's the ugliest thing. <laughs> like that, that 25 foot, 30 foot outrage? Are you talking like um, No, one? a little bit smaller. Yeah. I think Montauk? It was like a, no, that's, a, no. that's actually sharp looking. I like the little Montauk. Yeah, the Montauks are nice. The um, Dauntless? That's like the newer older. one. It's an older hull, but they're super ugly. 
but they ride amazing. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, the guy who designed Boston Whaler went on and did um, Edgewater. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then from there, he went and he did Everglades. Everglades oh, no are shit, really, really nice riding boats. Yeah. They they have like a proprietary hull system, the way they do it with their foam. It's really neat because I know somebody that used to sell those. And um, the whole construction process of it was really, really um, – really different compared to other boats. It was all like vacuum sealed, but the, they were real thick, heavy, heavy, heavy hulls. And man, they just rode like a dream. You know, we got oh. to whip around a 35 footer with trips in a tower. Oh man. Oh, oh, awesome. That's so, awesome. I, uh, I actually bought a knockoff, like a, the knockoff whaler this year. I got a Yacht Wahoo 16 2. Oh, it's, 86. it's a it's Wahoo. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Wahoo. Because it's got the exclamation point at the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, the boat is awesome, though. The thing zips. It absolutely zips. And they, uh, it has, like, that, that chined hull. So, it, like, it actually, like, soaks up chop. Like, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like a pancake. It's just... Oh, yeah. I'm loving the thing. That was one of my fi- favorite trips last year. It was yeah. revving that thing up through uh, yeah. April. Yeah, it's got an 01 two-stroke uh, 70 Yamaha on it. And the thing, the thing's got some go. Oh, yeah. So oh, that, that must be fun to really mess good. around with. Definitely. Good. All right. So, as a mechanic, what were some of the um, the most common issues that you would see coming in? Um, you know, honestly, the lack of use. If somebody doesn't use their boat a lot, that's when you start running into more issues. People that are out there using their boats, you know, even if you just go down in the dock and you're hanging out, just fire up that engine, let it run a little bit. Because the fuel nowadays is what's the real killer. You know, ethanol it eats up everything internally. Um, when it comes to the fuel systems and you know what i would mo- mostly run into is like clogged uh vst filters so you'd be going out and all of a sudden now you got a loss in rpm you're not getting wide open anymore and um some people can just live with it you know i don't they might not really even notice but then it gets to the point where they're not even planning off anymore and then yeah. they, they call a mechanic and they're like oh this thing rides like shit and uh you know Sometimes the other thing that I would run into is just customers that just don't maintain their boats. You know, they could have a dream boat of mine, and I get into it, and I'm disgusted by, like, what they do to it. It's just like, (coughs) come on, like, this thing's amazing. Like, how could you not, like, ever even, you know. Well, now that you're teaching, give those kids detentions, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. (laughs) But, you, um, you didn't change the fluid on this after school. <laughs> yeah, it would make sense, though. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like if you were to just leave your lawnmower outside and just, like, not st- ever start it, right? All those fluids, just everything sits at the bottom of the motor. Nothing's working through it, and it's just, like, pissed at you. <laughs> you know, it, it would get you back for not using it. <laughs> I've seen a motor, and this is, like, incredible, you know. I'm not going to say what brand because I don't want anyone hating, but 17 hours on a, on a motor – and I, it was condemned because lack of use. You know, it sat on its mooring so so much. You know, the only times that boat was ever driven was when we put it in in the spring. We'd do a water test. Like, we'd actually record, you know, max RPM, you know, this and that. And then uh, it would sit on that mooring all summer long. And then we would run it just to get to the lift to take it out in the fall. So, you know, over the course of 15 years or so, it had 17 hours and 15 yeah, years. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm yeah. more concerned with who the owner of this yeah. boat is. Not, not the actual boat. <laughs> it was boat a beautiful itself. boat. Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was a oh. uh, 20, I think it was a 28 foot Mako. Wow. With twin, twin motors. And one of the motors was completely corroded to all hell. That's so, crazy. You know, I, had a, I ended up um, having it warrantied by the factory because it had so low hours that they, they sent us a new powerhead. So I put a new powerhead on it. Oh my God! Yeah. Seventeen hours, yeah. And Fifteen. You weren't kidding. That's the only time they ran that boat. Yeah, was when you guys put it in and out. Yeah, exactly. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, that'd be so. an issue. Yeah, I'd do that in two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, it is amazing how many people buy boats, put them on docks, and then they never see them leave the dock. I don't know what the point of that is. You know, I don't know. Like no. even at my marina, I just noticed that there's a lot of people that. They'll, they'll go on them. They don't, just don't leave the dock. You know, you might see them down there hanging out on it. I can see it with the big boats when it's $6.10 a gallon. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But Fuel. even some of the smaller ones, I don't know. You know, there's been a huge surge in the last two years, too, of, of new boats. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, people that never have boated in their life and, you know, 
so new owners and new boaters, and they have no experience. You know, the amount of times I was hooking up a trailer with a brand new boat on it to a customer that has never trailered anything in their life was amazing. I'm like, wow. you've never trailered anything, and you're going to be trailering this down to, you know, up to Winnie, like, today? <laughs> like, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not even not even a landscaping trailer? Nothing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, they probably have a sweet brand new truck too, just ready to go. Uh, oh, yeah. Keeps you in business though, doesn't yeah. it? Oh yeah, exactly. Definitely. That's job security, is what you that know. is. Well, I think the other thing is too for some of these new boaters when they have an issue happen in July and they get all pissed off because they can't find a mechanic. You know, they're calling everywhere and the list is that long. Oh yeah, it's always a, a waiting. Yeah, game. there's definitely there's obviously a demand for marine techs, right? Oh yeah, yeah definitely huge demand, which is why that you it was was it you that actually put this program in place or advocated for it yes yeah, so um yeah so talking about that program um we actually started out as just a an adult education um program about two years ago now okay real quick so, i don't think we actually told everybody what the program is so oh far. yeah yeah so you want to talk about the program yeah and we'll throw it in the description yeah, but you can talk yeah about so it. um <laughs> so right here in haverhill mass um at whittier tech we're, uh, we're running a marine technology program um you know, we were fortunate early on to get sponsored by Yamaha. So we have a ton of awesome products to work on now. Um, just recently this year, I also got Mercury Marine involved. Um, you know, originally this was meant to just be like a night course for adults on um, wanting to learn how to, you know, do their basic maintenance on their own boats. And um, we're on to our fifth semester of night school, you know, with each class that I have, you know, I've been able to at least find one student in, out of that class that wants to actually make this their trade. Yeah. You know, I was taking students that are in their retirement that were like convinced that they're not going to go back to the to work, but they, they enjoyed it so much that they want to do something. And um, so they're getting hired for, at you know, different various dealerships. And, you know, the more, more students we get hired, especially at a Yamaha dealership, the more Yamaha sends us. So yeah. we kept getting all these awesome products, and um, I, I brought it up with the school, and, you know, we, we got an advisory board together. You know, we have one of the largest advi advisory boards um, out of any of the shops. Um, so we went through the Chapter 74 process last summer. So what's, the, what's like, the advisory board look like? How many people is that made up of? Uh, just about, like, 35 members. Wow, really? Oh, wow. No kidding. Yeah, so it's all of the different um, dealerships that are local. We have... Um, the different marinas, they're all on it. Um, a couple, um, high school graduates that, you know, they wish they could have taken marine tech. Yeah. Um, you know, tons of, tons of different support for this new program. That's awesome. Um, so the adult education program, that's obviously still running, right? Yeah. And that's like, so that you do two semesters. Is there a third, a summer one too? Or is it, what do you do spring? And is it spring um, and So fall? what we do is we have like a fall semester and it's a 100-hour course, and then we do another, you know, run of the same thing again in the springtime. Oh, okay. And then we, we run more of an intensive program during the summertime. So it's like a consolidated type course in the summer because you only have you have less time, right? You would in spring um, and fall. No, actually, so right now, like the fall, we were running a 100-hour program. Yeah. And it's all based on um, Yamaha's intro to outboard systems. Okay. So upon completing the course, uh, the students are receiving a certificate um, from Yamaha. And, uh, you know, then the fall, uh, once the fall's over, going to the spring, we do the same thing again. 100-hour, you know, certificate program. Um, the plans for the summer is to do a 200-hour course. Oh, gotcha. But okay. it's going to be more catered towards um, people that are actually – like underemployed or unemployed that are actually looking for work and trying yep. to get into a trade. So it's not only Marine Technologies running this style program. All the different, um, you know, shops are going to be trying to offer, you know, some sort of course um, to students, you know, specifically like in the state of Massachusetts, unemployed that need yeah. to get into a trade. That's cool. So, oh, so you want to have a question? No, no so the, uh, the fall and the spring courses – is that like one night a week, two nights a week? Um, right now it's so it's two nights a week. Two nights. Yeah. And then it's like was like six to nine or something, like two three hour. 
Well, yep. I guess the time. Well, anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Six to nine right now. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Six Rob to nine. Gronkowski. Six yeah. to nine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What days? Tuesday, Thursdays? No, Monday, Monday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> go two for two on that. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. What kind of uh, participation do you get? Like, how many people are so in class on average? Um, So, it's actually... This is what I think really sparked the school's interest in making this available to the high school level was because every time that they opened up enrollment, it fills right up. No kidding. And awesome. we, we cap right out. You know. So, so how many students do you take per class? Um, right now, 12, 12 oh, that's adults. That's perfect. Yeah. Class. Solid. That's yeah. perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. So if I'm somebody who's listening to this right now and I want to learn how to work on my engine, how would I go about the process to sign up for this class when you guys do offer it? Um, so if you actually go on to um, Whittier Tech's site and you look up um, the adult education courses, anytime um, we're coming up, like, you know, to uh, the fall or to the spring, they usually do another posting. Um, you'll see it on their Facebook as well. Um, and you could always actually contact the school. You could um, contact Tia Gerber is who you'd want to get in, you know, in touch with. She's um, the night school coordinator. So. Okay. We'll link it up on our website too. So, for someone, is awesome. there like financial aid available for people that might not be able to afford this program? Or, um, so actually, uh, the Massachusetts Marine Trades Association. It's a nonprofit organization, and um, they were originally they were actually covering half of the tuition for the okay. course. Um, so it was normally, you know, it's a thousand dollar course. They were covering half of it, so students only had to pay five hundred um, for the the program that's, you know, state run for the unemployed, you know, that's that's totally covered. They don't have to pay. Wow. That's awesome. True. That's a sweet deal. So, yeah, 500 to 1000 bucks to learn. You might save you a lot of money on the back end, even if you're just planning on doing it on your own. Well, right? think about it. If you spend oh $1,000 and invest your time how to learn how to do this stuff, just think about what when you do routine maintenance on your boat, when you drop it off, like you're, you're spending 300 bucks at least. Right, your winterization, you're getting ready yeah. in the spring. Any little thing that might come up, you know, if you can't find a fuse that went down that <laughs> but t- took me ten hours to yeah. find <laughs> him ten minutes. But I think in addition <laughs> to it too, though, there's like this it's such a satisfying feeling when you do you the work on your own, right? Like I, mean, I don't know, just when you open things up, it's like, yeah, this is my motor. Hell yeah, you're going <laughs> going into the store and getting all your parts. Like this is this is for my boat. <laughs> 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 yeah, so no, that's really that's really awesome. So. This is translated now into a full blown course at Woody Tech. Yeah. yeah. You pretty much changed your whole career, right? You started oh, teaching yeah. this year. Yep. Um, you know, now I'm a full time teacher. It's it is pretty amazing. Um, you know, definitely the dream job for me. Uh you know, summer's off. Can't beat that. Nope. <laughs> um but yeah, so with how great, you know, the night school program has been for the marine technology um shop, they all of a sudden, you know, wanted to make this available to the high school level, which is really cool. Um, so this is the first year that we've been offering it at that level. Um, currently, you know, 350 students are making their way through their exploratories, and they, they get a chance to check out marine technology. And, you know, they have the first – the freshman class this year has, like, first bid on taking the course. You know, there's no chance for the upperclassmen right now, which is really tough on those kids. Oh. Because they always ask me, yeah. you know, oh, you know, if I was a freshman, I would have picked this as my shop. But because you know it's what? such can, a new program, you, they you only graduate, want it. pay me a thousand bucks, you can take the class. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I tell them. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah, that that's great. So, um, the, you mentioned exploratories. I'm just people might not be aware of exactly what that is. Would you mind just kind of tell them how the school operates? Yeah. So um, it's a tech school, and they have. Um, just about, I'm going to get the number wrong, but I think they have like about 31 different shops to choose from. And freshman year, when students go in, they have a chance to check out each one of the shops, whether it's carpentry, metal fab, you know, marine tech, auto tech. They have to go through each one of the shops for two and a half days. And then they have to make the hardest decision of their life at that age. Like, I couldn't imagine, but um, they have to pick a top three. So their first shop pick is what they're 99% likely to get into. And then they have the second pick, which is obviously, you know, if a shop fills right up and they can't take any more kids, then they'll put them into their second pick. But um, 
And then that it, like the weeks alternate right between academics and then in the shop. Yeah, so um, they have week one and week two, and uh, the students will be in academics for a full week, and then they'll go to shop for a full week. So you'll have, because I know you're just kind of getting into that, and this is your first year there, and now you're just getting into that process where the kids are going to be making those decisions we talked about before and over the next, what, couple weeks, you said? Yeah, so I have another four groups of students, and then at that point, all the freshmen have already been through every single shop, and they'll have to make their final decision. So um, that should be right around you know the end of February, and they'll they'll begin you know full time in the shop that they choose beginning of March. Will you have a cap with how many students you can have in your class? Um, no cap. Nope. No cap. All right. I bet it's gonna fill up quick. So man. you must do you have an assistant in the classroom, like a co-teacher? Uh, Is it just you? not yet. We're you know depending on how many students I end up getting because yeah. I, I still don't know. Um, how many students are going to sign up, you know, that's definitely in the plans. You know, if I do get this crazy number of students, then they're going to have to get another instructor. All right. So I have a the golden question for you, and I know you're biased to boats, but, like, why do you think someone would want to pick marine tech over, like, w- being an auto mechanic? Um, I guess, you know, they're very similar in the ways <laughs> that, you know, Anything mechanical, it's very transferable, that, that knowledge. But if somebody wants to be out on the water, you know, they don't want to be underneath a car, marine tech's the way to go. You know, I feel like it's a really hard choice for a lot of kids. Um, you know, marine tech's obviously, it's the newest shop at the school. So it's really still in its early stages. But, you know, when it comes down to deciding... So I have a lot of students that come in and they're like, I have, you know, when I came to this school, I wanted to come here for auto tech. And then they go through my shop and they work on some outboards. They work on some wave runners. And then they're like, this is going to be the hardest decision of my life because I, I like auto tech. Like I like cars, but I also really like marine tech now. And I always tell them that either choice, you know, you're going to start out making the same amount of money. doesn't matter. But it comes down to your day-to-day activities. You know, when you're choosing to be a marine technician, you're going out, you're bombing around on a quarter-million-dollar boat. Like, the sky's the limit in the boating industry. You know, I could just show them a catalog of, like, these super yachts and blow their minds, like, with what is out there in the marine world. Um, and then another thing is just that transferable knowledge. So I always say, yeah, I'm a marine mechanic, but I work on my own truck. I put a lift gate in my truck. I do mm-hmm. all the maintenance on my truck. You know, can I align my tires? Can I balance my tires? No. So there's specialties that each different mechanic is going to hold. You know, so I'm going to bring my my truck to a car mechanic for certain things. You know, there's certain things I shouldn't be doing. And I'm sure the same goes for a car mechanic working on a boat. There's certain things that they shouldn't be doing. They shouldn't be putting, you know, a, a car's alternator on a marine engine because it's not – <laughs> it's not the <laughs> the same so it's it it's not you know technically safe <laughs> so yeah. plus you can work outside a lot like on the boat on the dock on the water even in the shop you're standing up you know you're not underneath crawling underneath anything so yeah that, that would be cool it. getting calls like the one that chris had for you like going down to people's marinas and like checking out things and yeah you might even so go for a boat ride too. might even go for a boat ride yeah <laughs> that's really cool yeah. So, so. Uh, is it so? It, it's strictly engines, though, and mechanicals. Does it? Do you do any like fiberglass work or any any type yeah. of? Yeah. So um, we're gonna be definitely doing fiberglassing. Um, I have plans. So um, for their sophomore year, we're gonna be building wooden wooden skiffs to kind of learn techniques. Oh, with you are really following the footsteps oh. of your father. Yeah, your <laughs> father did that in new report. <laughs> yeah. Yo, he's yeah. got the whole <laughs> curriculum ready uh, to go. He just <laughs> slid it under the <laughs> table. <laughs> oh, you lucky son of a gun. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I might throw in a couple new plans. You know, I've always <laughs> wanted to build one of those little hydro. Um, what am I saying? Yeah. No, like the little runabouts are. Are saying it right? Hydrofoil? No, not hydrofoil. Oh uh, man, the hard, the little race boat. Yeah, the little race boats. Yeah, the yeah, little wooden race hydro, boats. Hydrofoil. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, right. I think I it's hydrofoil. Kinda... That's the fin on the. Yeah, motor, that's what right? I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hydrofoil. Yeah. But I think it came from that. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hydroplane. Hydroplane. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Okay. 
I've always, you know, I go to the race every year. It's right in Kingston. And oh, like, yeah. It's not little like eight foot, ten foot boats. It's not Kingston like Lake. It's the little lake that's next to Kingston mm-hmm. Lake, right? And they rip around. Yeah. Yeah. I've I think it would be like the one. coolest thing to get some some plans for that and like that would a, be so cool. the boat with the kids. You know, you only need like a 15 horse and the thing will go like 40. Like, I want to <laughs> drive it. Boat, <laughs> yeah. <please. laughs> you know, so um, that's definitely in the plans. Um, for this spring, when I have my full-time group of students, they're going to be taking their Massachusetts um, safety boating certificate, you know, so they're going to be able to go out on the water that summer, you know, if they choose. If they if their parents have a boat, if they go and get their own boat, you know, that's like the ultimate freedom out there, getting out on the water, especially at that age. Definitely. So that's definitely in the plans. You know, I, I really would love to have, you know, a couple of my star students four years from now go out and get their captain's license you know if i can get them on co-op or get them hired you know by like the party boats for example Mm -hmm. then they can work on on the water during the summer and get that time on the water you know by the time they turn 18 they can go ahead and and try and get that well that's what's really cool right now too is that you're starting with freshmen so you don't have to rush to get this curriculum for a four-year plan right now and get it implemented so by having freshmen you can kind of grow with this first group over the years and See, because you really have no oversight, right, in terms of what you need to teach or anything. You could kind of, I'm sure it's like pretty loose. I mean, are there other marine programs in the state that are like this? Yeah, so down in New Bedford, there's a relatively new program. They're about three years old. And then um, Upper Cape Technical School. That program is like unreal. Like it, that's a really hard school to get into because anybody in the Cape can go to it. But they've been doing a marine tech program for about 25 years now. Yeah, so they have uh, a down path. And it's like I went down there for um, for my details to do uh, the testing. And they show me their facility. They have like this amazing facility. They do everything in-house. They do canvas work. They do welding. You know, they build trailers, like hydraulic trailers, like on CAD, and then actually weld it up and make them. So kids are leaving that program, and they're getting jobs you know, at these, like, big, big marine companies, so. Well, dude, you're going to get there. I mean, they have 25 years in it, you know what I mean? And, you know, you'll you'll get there. It'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to be uh, Yamaha North, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <there> you go. <laughs> well, I was, like, as you were talking, I was just kind of, like, mapping in my head, like, where you would have job opportunities. And at first, I was thinking, like, oh, you could work all along any coast. And then I'm like, oh, my God, imagine how many marine techs are probably needed in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. Oh, you know, yeah. There's so many. Oh, there's yeah. So many, yeah. There's just so many opportunities and places for you to go. It's just kind of, it's, I think it's awesome. You know, that's, that is exactly um, something that stuck with me when I took uh, my marine technology course up in the lakes region and I got out of college. My instructor said that, you know, same thing, that, you know, with this skill, you can go anywhere there's a body of water and there's going to be a boat on it and you can get a job. Yeah. You know, whether it, you want to move to Florida, out to the lakes, anywhere. There's so there's so much of a demand for mechanics now and good mechanics. And somebody like you who's super personable, you know, you're really good about getting back to people, like returning phone calls and emails and that's half the game too. So if anybody's listening in the marine world right now, those people that do that and get back to you and just keep you in the loop, like people like Mike does, and we have a lot of our our fishing, but um, some of the people that we use as well. I mean, that is almost just as important as when you are available. You know, keep those people in the loop and and make sure you're treating them good. And you're one of the good guys, which is why we wanted you out here tonight. You know, so yeah, I think that's a, the program's amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. I think it's a great thing. It's the progression of it, how you got in there and how you're making it happen, is it's, it's, that's wicked impressive to me. I feel like uh, the trades in general are just so, like, they're just so overlooked by so many people that are like, oh, college, college, college. It's just, like, crazy to me that um, there are there are so many students that won't even go to Woody or Tech uh, that should have gone, you know, but, you know, obviously they get, they probably fill up every year, I would assume, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they so it's what what is the areas like? Do they have like a preference? Is it like Averill people first, and then Amesbury, and then um, like how, what's the application process like? So yeah, they definitely they pull a lot of students from Haverhill, um, but Haverhill is such a big city, yeah. so that's why you know if they they have, let's say like a smaller town like Amesbury, they might only have 120 kids in one 
you know, yeah. class. Yeah, so and maybe like 10 or 20 60 of them, of them are so going to apply to Whittier well. Tech. Really? You know? That high, So huh? if they were to pull all 60 of them, they're going to shut down Amesbury High School. <laughs> like, yeah. they're not going to have any, any students Well, now there. that you have a Marine Corps, <laughs> you're probably going to be getting a lot yeah. of people. You know, when I was you teaching know? eighth grade in Newburyport, I think we had roughly around 190 to 200, uh, 200 kids in the eighth grade every year. And, um, yeah, they were a low percentage for Whittier Vote Tech. We would probably have maybe five to ten kids a year apply. But when I was in Haverhill before that, it was like it was like the hardest school to get into. Oh, you yeah. Know, they all wanted to go. They all wanted to go. And it is t- challenging to get into. It's not easy. I hear people say it's harder to get into there than some of the Catholic schools and stuff nowadays. Yeah. You know, so, like, I know this will change throughout the years. But if someone were to complete the program and then – so four years from now, you have your first group of graduates. Like, what it would be the like the average starting pay for someone that gets into the marine tech industry? You know, I'm I'm hoping like for a co-op, you know, something like seventeen bucks an hour. Yeah, okay. just for co-op, you know, they can get a job for a dealer. You know, really prove themselves, and then when they graduate, bump them up to like twenty bucks an hour. Just so co-op is when out. they're still at school; they can work while they're at school. Correct? Yeah. So co-op's part of, um, you know, the Whittier Tech way that any any tech school they try and get their students out in the field that they're studying, and so their spring semester when they're junior, um, they can start applying. Basically, like you're applying for a job, mm-hmm. and um, it's kind of like a trial trial run at different places you know it might not be your final job when you graduate but who knows you might love it and you might want to stay and um by senior year they should be out on co-op basically their whole year and that's that's whenever they're in their um shop week so if they're not you know there's week one and week two again you have a week in shop and then a week in academics so they still do have to go to school you know they have math english history all that yep Man, this is just this has been really informative. It's been really I'm excited for you. I'm excited yeah, for the too. program. I'm excited to see the youth kind of get involved and in going to this route. I think it's going to be a tremendous success, you know, given our area promoting it. We definitely need them. We definitely need young kids who want to do the trades. Um we just had on our podcast one of the young guys that works at the bait shop. He just picked up his first boat actually. I drove him down there to get in my truck on Sunday and um you know, it's funny. He gets his boat. He texts me, Dad. He run, already get it in. He runs up to West Marine to get a bunch of shit, yeah. you know? And he already texts me. And he's like, dude, I just, like, I want to buy everything. I I got to get <laughs> yeah. a good job. I got to go to college so I can afford this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, like, man, that would be, like, a prime example. Somebody no, he's like going to wait. Just yeah. tell him to wait until Hudson's is open. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, that's what I said. They're not open now, right? They're reopening on... Uh... Uh, February 1st or 2nd, I think, yeah. they're opening back up. So, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, and then, um, so. I do have one more. Go ahead, I, yeah. get a, I get a lot of questions no, tonight. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> yeah, this is great. On. All right, so, you, like, all right, so I understand that uh, it's Yamaha that's uh, supplying things for you to help, uh, you know, educate the students, work in the class. But what about, like, like regular consumers? Like, I remember back in the day, um, you know, people used to bring their cars into the auto place and – I don't know if it's like a discount on the, the kids work on it, and it's kind of like it's kind of like a business, but it is the shop for the school. So could I like bring my boat to Woodier Tech and have it be serviced and worked on by the by your students? Yeah, so they actually they made a post, and it was like right when we started the year, <laughs> and they were like marine technology open to the public, you know, for you know your basic like hundred hour services yeah. like okay. winterizing, winterizing shrink wrapping like all that and the phones were off the hook <laughs> oh, really? and i was like answering them i'm like hey listen i'm sorry i don't have any students yet <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. you know once i have a group of students then yeah we're gonna start opening it up to the public because there's no better way to learn than working on for sure an actual yeah, boat like real that life has something and, yeah. you know maybe potentially wrong with it and um just get in getting used to working on something different every day kind of thing. Um, but for now, we I kind of held off. I only was working on teachers' boats. So I worked yeah. on about, like, 15 boats this Ooh, fall. A lot of, bo- a lot of teachers have boats there? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I was, like, the like new best buddy. That, you know, it, I'm new there, too, so I wanted to get, like, in with all the different shop teachers or some of the academic teachers, you know, definitely the – 
uh, big dogs, you know, the administration. <laughs> but, you know, no, if they had a... You have to have boats. I mean, I, I, no teacher is paid enough, in my opinion, but you have the whole summer off. You need to have a boat of some sort. Yeah. You got to do something. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> and also, to answer your question, so, yeah, it because it's going to, you know, education purposes, all the customer has to pay for is their parts. So there's no no labor. Wow. That's Which is insane. <laughs> like, yeah. Huge. <laughs> yeah. Huge. Oh, yeah, that's so awesome. You'll see, like, as soon as I get a group and we open it up officially, there'll probably be a line down the street of boats come fall. Yeah. Well, that's really exciting for the community, for those kids, for you. That's that's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, you yeah. mentioned yeah. earlier you, you work with the, what was it, the Massachusetts Maritime Trade Association. That's Randall. Did you talk to Randall with that? Yeah, Randall has been a huge help. He's this a great program. guy. Yeah, he is. Um, anything I could think of, and I ask him, he's always, like, doing his best to help us out. So and, um, do you know much about their about their operation? Um, I'm actually I'm headed down to the Business of Boating Conference in a couple days down in Foxborough, which is something that I'm pretty sure he put together. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's definitely – Doing big things with this industry, especially in the state of Mass. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people listen to this. My note, Randall, he used to be the head of the marinas at um, in Newburyport Marinas. So, like all he, um, I know my family knew him forever because he was the guy you had to drop the check off to in the spring, you know. And he was just a tremendous human being, great guy. Really, really cares about the water. He's really passionate about this project that he's been doing now, ugh, probably five or six years. So, actually, we got to call him up. We got to get him on here. We got, he'd, he'd do it. He'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. He'd be great. Wicked nice guy. And, um, yeah, just seeing him grow and get more people, like, that's what he does. He's trying to get more people involved in various maritime trades. And, um, yeah, like you said, he's helping you out with that program for under under unemployed people, right? It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. You know, any, again, like, anything that I've, you know, thought of, I'll send him an email. And he's like, yep, you know. Massachusetts Marine Trades Association Association is going to help you out with that. Like I'm like, wow, like this is incredible. Like he helped us out get our, you know, first Mercury motor. You know, he's helped out um, with the program. Like I said early on, he was paying for half of the tuition um, for students to sign up. Um, just promoting our program. You know, something like this, like having a strong team behind this new new program, is why Yamaha loves it so much Absolutely. they think that we're the best trade school literally in this country for what we're trying to do right now yeah like awesome. for high school level like <clears throat> so you know starting out and then it's evolved so rapidly and it's going to continue to evolve to be this like big huge um training facility but you know starting out when i was teaching night school you know um, almost two years ago we had only a couple 25 horse Yamahas and a bunch of workbenches and, you know, some, you know, strange array of tools. But now we've got five Yamaha 25 horsepowers. We've got two brand new Yamaha Wave Runners. We have a Sea Dew jet ski. We have a boat that the school bought that has a Suzuki on it, a little 18 footer with a 70 horse Suzuki. And we got three Yamaha 150s. And anytime, like, you know, we're getting more and more people into this trade. More companies are reaching out. Like I had Ray Marine reach out to me. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, they want to try and start sending us, you know, some some products so the students can work on it because they want students to go work for them eventually. Yeah, that's cool. I was thinking too, like all the elements of it. Like you could be wiring fish finders and you know, and yeah, all that fun stuff. Bringing cushions and yeah, upholstery right now and making and like, a killing. Oh, my yeah, God, yeah. Right? Putting stuff through hull. Pipe work, custom T-tops, custom brackets, all that kind of stuff. It's just there's so much. Now, will you be doing that kind of thing, too? Will you ever get it? Um, well, not right we now. Have, well, there's a welding shop, right? Yeah, yeah there is a welding shop. And, it again, like that's one of the things that I found now that I'm full-time there is probably, like, I think the coolest thing is that you're stuck in this building full of different tradespeople that, you know, they've worked in that field for years, and they're, they're so ready to help you out with whatever it may be. So yeah. I've had, well, I've already, you know, I've worked with machine, the machine shop. You know, I had an older Yamaha and some of the threads 
were worn out and they they re they rethreaded it. I've had um, <laughs> carpentry. They built me a dock for my shop area so the students can climb in and out of the boat easier because beginning of the year students are so excited when they saw a boat they were literally just running and like diving into the thing yeah, and i'm like no, no no no, there's a ladder right next to it so i had them build me a dock so it's a little safer yeah that's cool you know um welding like they welded up little bits and pieces for me you know the body shop there they've i took a console out of my dad's backyard that was just rotten away and had leaf stains all over it and they painted it and it looks like a brand new showroom center console and then they've painted engine cowls for me. You know, they, the whole school itself, like, works so well together. With That's what awesome. They do. You know, one of the things that they do, don't they build, like, a model house? Like, they get all the all the trays together and build a model house. How sick would that be if now if you, you guys build, build a model boat? boat like, <laughs> yeah. All together with I was just thinking, glass. like, the welding shops doing a nice roll of dimes, putting that tubing together oh, for yeah. a nice tower or something. That would oh, be yeah. awesome. <laughs> Can you oh, build yeah. me a tower for my boat? We're going to attack the little <laughs> guy, the welders. <laughs> yep. So, oh, oh, that's really cool. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. I think this is, like, super informative, and it's awesome, and it's an amazing program. And anyone that listens to this or, or sees this, you should definitely inquire about it, whether you're an adult trying to get into just servicing your own stuff um, or if you're you're a kid and you're, or if you have a kid that might be um, looking to go in the trade. It's just an amazing option. What an opportunity. Thank you again, Mike. I really appreciate it. Got me excited for the future of our industry and the fact that you're running it. Again, great guy. You get a vision for this thing, and you're getting a lot of support, and hopefully people watching this, you know, we'll start going to Woody Tech to become – Become part of this program. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah, I so appreciate it. Thank you for having me on tonight. Before we head out, you mind staying for a little extra time for our members and talk about some engine maintenance, some things as we go into spring that we could roll into. Things to look out for. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, yeah. cool. all right. Gonna give all the secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you for watching our YouTube special. Please like and subscribe if you're on YouTube or Spotify. Um, for our members, the next section of this with Mike, we're gonna talk about again engine maintenance, getting ready for the season. Uh, that will be on our website through the members only. Okay, if you want to become a member of Mouse of the Merrimack and get access to videos like that, go to www.mouseofthemerrimack.com and become a member for $7 a month. You get access to all kinds of stuff um, that help you become a better fisherman and boater. All right, thank you. Over and out.